Hi, and welcome to Inequality Notation. Now, FYI, the inequalities that we're going to solve are not super exciting. The thing I really want you to get out of this lesson is interval notation. Interval notation, we're going to use a lot in pre-calculus. So I want to make sure that you really get a handle on that notation more than anything else, because we are going to use it a lot, a lot this year. And it's going to be sticking around for a long time, too. So I really want to make sure that you have a handle on that interval notation. Can't stress that enough. So let's take a look at what it is. So you've been writing your inequalities in inequality notation. Wild idea is what we call it, so why not use that? Now there is something that you, I just want to show you right now. It's called set notation. Set notation is um, really important. I'm working on some calculus stuff right now, and there's kind of some places where you could maybe use it. It's really used in college level maths. Uh, set notation. So we're not going to worry too much about it. I do want to show it to you. Uh, this is the one time I'll read it. This is the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 11. Uh, it's, it's a very long, complicated thing, and we're not going to need it this year, so I don't want you to worry about it. This is the good stuff. This is the good stuff right here. And actually, I'm just noticing the good stuff is the bad stuff because it's got the wrong thing. This should be a bracket on there. Uh, it's got a bracket or a parentheses to start it off. Uh, if you have an equal to, in general, that means the equal to's are brackets. And if you don't have an equal to, we use parentheses. Um, so if we were to graph it on a number line, it would look like this. Now, the way you've been doing them, up to this point is we've always just done like a filled in circle and then the arrow it's the same deal um, it's just instead of a filled in circle now we're going to use a bracket the only reason that you don't do this right away is when you learned it you were a little kid and you didn't have the manual dexterity to make the difference between a parentheses and a bracket that's really the only reason little kids are good at like, oh, I got filled in circle and a colored in circle. They're better at grasping that idea. And normally we would have, we probably could have asked you to do it in bracket and parentheses, but it carries over to other things. But for the most part, it's kind of that manual dexterity thing that just didn't have the dexterity to make brackets and parentheses when we learned about number lines. So here's a collection of inequalities. I've solved them all, and I want to write my answer in interval notation. Now, it's actually really difficult to write it right off of your inequality notation when you start off. So what I really recommend you do is whenever you're trying to write an interval notation, if you're struggling at it, make a graph, like every time. If you're ever like, oh, I don't really know what it's going to look like, make a quick number line graph, and then it's easy as pie. So we've got x is less than or equal to negative, I'm sorry, less than or equal to 2, not negative 2. So I know it's going to go that way, and I know I would normally put a filled-in circle there, but now I know I've got to put a bracket instead. And now you just read it like a book from left to right. Don't follow the arrow. Read it like a book from left to right, an English book, not Arabic. So you would start at um, the left-hand side. And the left-hand side is really deep in the negatives. So like negative infinity, comma, two, and then a bracket. So you just read straight across it. I just read, whoop, right that way, read, right, whoop, right that way. And it's always going to be in that fashion. Let's do another. So I've got x is greater than six-fifths. So I know I've got to go that way. Normally, for a greater, I would do an open circle, but I'm going to use a parentheses. I know open circles are now parentheses. And once again, we're just going to read it like an English book or a Spanish book. Um, you would read it from left to right. And so that would start with six fifths, and give it a parentheses, comma, infinity. And I gave six fifths a parentheses because that's what was there. So since that was what was there, that's what I put there. Next one, x is greater than or equal to negative 9, so I want to get bigger. And for the filled-in circles, I want to put a bracket. And now, once again, I'm going to read it like an English book, Spanish book, uh, or some other languages that I know. But I want to read it left to right. Now, so one thing you'll notice is infinity. Infinity always gets a parentheses, whether it's positive infinity or negative infinity, 
always put a parentheses on it. Reason we wanna put parentheses on it is the same reason we have open circles. Open circles are things that we're reaching towards, but we're never quite getting there. This graph is getting really, really close to six fifths, but it's never quite getting there. So we put a parentheses. We can never reach infinity. We can never reach the biggest number. We can get bigger and bigger numbers, but we can never reach it. So we can get our numbers bigger and bigger, but we can never quite reach positive infinity or negative infinity. So we put a parentheses on there. So I wanna solve this thing and I want to draw an inequality, write my answer in any inequality notation and graph the thing. Oof, that was hard. So the first thing I wanna get rid of is I wanna get rid of that seven. So I'm gonna multiply every piece of this inequality by seven, because my goal is to get X by itself in the middle. So I get seven is less than or equal to negative two minus three X, which is less than 28. Then I wanna get rid of that two, so I'm going to add a two everywhere. So add a two in the middle. Add a two on this side and add a two on this side. So I get nine is less than or equal to negative three X, which is less than 30. Then I've got to divide to get rid of that negative three. But whenever we multiply or divide by a negative with our inequalities, our inequality flips. So we get negative three, uh, we've got an X and we got negative 10. Now I don't really like uh, the writing my inequalities in that order, I'd prefer them where the smallest number is on the left and the biggest number is on the right. That's just the way my brain works. So I'm going to flip everything again, just so it makes more sense. And then it matches up with my number line. I've got negative 10, I've got a negative three, and I know X is right in the middle. So I want this metal piece right there. The negative 10 has a parentheses on it because I don't have an equal to on that less than. The less than or equal to uh, by the negative three that does have an equal to, so it gets a bracket. If I were to write this thing in interval notation, notice I have a number on both sides. I don't always need infinity for these things. So I can just write, it goes from negative 10 to negative three. That is my interval for my solution. So I could write it in interval notation. I can make a graph. I'm sorry, that's first one was inequality notation. So I can write it in an inequality notation. I can make a graph or I can do interval notation. If you want a quick reference for what your graph should look like, if you've got a less than, it should go that way. And you've got parentheses on negative infinity. And then the C is just like the, the number, whatever your number happens to be, wherever that thing is graphed. If you want to, you can quick write that down. Um, it's kind of handy. But in general, remember, read it from left to right like you would read a textbook. Or a math, or math textbook, you can do that. Um, you might have seen these in advanced algebra. I'm pretty sure you saw these in advanced algebra. Unions and intersections. Unions is a way of saying or. So it can be an A or B, or both, and an intersection is this thing in the middle. Now, I'm really showing you these two things, but we're only gonna use this one. We're not gonna use this one. This one is a no. We're not gonna use the intersections, but we will sometimes use a union when we can't get everything together. Right, Maleficent? She's been sleeping for like a couple hours, and of course, once I start a lesson video, guess who wakes up? Oh, thank you. Thank you for not showing them your butt. That's so rude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. All right. Let's actually do this problem instead of seeing it all done. I really wish I had remembered to erase all these before I started. <laughs> so one more time, I want to make sure I can show you once again, you just want to read this thing like a book or an English book. The very first thing I see is that negative three and it's got a bracket on it. Then I've got a two. After that, I've got a parentheses. And now I've got a bit of a gap. There's a big old gap in my problem. And I show that gap using that parentheses. My problem picks up again with this five. And then it continues 
to infinity. So you can see here with that union stuff that I was just talking about, um, that I can either be in the green chunk or the blue chunk. So this is saying I can either be in the blue chunk or, that's what the union stands for, the green chunk. Green chunk or blue chunk. Negative three to two or five to infinity. Either one is a good place for my variable to be. And that's it. That's it for interval notation, okay? Very important thing. We're going to use it a lot. There's a homework assignment, but I bet that thing is wrong. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.